This kind of sophistication comes at a price. The engineering that makes the plane so safe is also extremely complex. And when battling against a deadline, complexity eats valuable time. The schedule is slipping. Five and six could be like, could be one out. I've got seven. The main problem is that the major parts were not fully finished when they were delivered back in May. The wings, tail and fuselage all need more work. They must be finished before the laborious process of testing the state-of-the-art systems can be achieved. By October 2004, the sophisticated flight deck is nearing completion. This process involves powering up the aircraft's electrical system for the first time. Hello, uh, Sylvie. Uh, Sylvie? Hi, that's it. We've got number two. Sebastian, switch the breaker back there, okay? Yep, yep, okay, good. It's uh, very exciting, <laughs> first of all, and quite stressing uh, <laughs> because, uh, because uh, of the challenge that uh, this represents in, in terms of safety, because the tests we are making now, uh, performing now, are the tests of the real aircraft, and we, we have to ensure that the aircraft is, is good. For Ellen Pons, the size and sheer complexity of the task means every day she has a mountain to climb. Every single wire is uh, tested after assembly to verify that uh, all the connections are correctly uh, installed, connected to the right uh, to the right extremities, and that uh, we we can uh, we can perform the function of the of the aircraft uh, without any problem. By now, there are three A380s under construction in the vast equipping hall. Around half a billion pounds worth of aircraft under one enormous roof. By 2008, when production is running at full speed, a brand new plane will leave this hall every week. This is a big bucks business and Chief Commercial Officer John Leahy is determined that the project stays on schedule. Getting the airplane out on time is critically important. There are significant penalties that we would have to pay to each customer if we delay his aircraft after a certain grace period of, uh, uh, I don't want to say how long, but a certain grace period involved in every contract. The penalties for late delivery run to hundreds of thousands of pounds a week. Christian Polite is the engineer in charge of the tail fin, known as the vertical tail plane, or VTP. The fitting has not gone smoothly, but finally it's time to install the last piece. It's a camera that gives the pilot a bird's eye view from the very top of the fin, some 75 feet up. Right now we are going up to the uh, almost to the very top of the uh, vertical tail plane uh, in order to install the last component which remains on the VTP still left. Yeah? You can easily see that this part is only screwed to the structure by I guess 20 screws around and it has to be connected to the electric system via these two little connectors. The signals are transferred uh, via a fiber optical cable down to a, a monitor in the cockpit. Here at the Airbus factory in Stade, Germany, back in February 2004, Christian oversaw the final construction of the largest carbon fiber fin ever conceived. The ambitious scale of the production process meant there were always going to be problems. We started with a schedule which allowed us to assemble the first fin uh, within a reasonable time, but in fact we encountered problems which delayed the, uh, the time for the assembly uh, and to worsen the situation the lead time was shortened. So we ended up with a lead time that was nearly half of the original lead time we planned. Although the fin was delivered on time, Christian's work was not finished. The fin was delivered with so many jobs left to do 
that he had to move to France to continue the work. We came here, thought we had it. We have a good planning, we have a good time schedule, we have everything on hand, and, but it wasn't like that. The moment we started working, uh, we had to, to change each and every, every point. The planning was upside down, and so we had to, just to start to work. So that's the way you can find the way through the jungle, yeah. Now though, as the screws go in on the camera, the end is in sight. It's a good sound. That means the screw is in. With every screw, we're a little step towards the end, yeah? But then, yeah. there's a problem. The fiber optic cable is too short to reach the camera. The connector is here and the cable ends here and we have to have another one centimeter about one in about half an inch, which is the cable too short. I mean, but these are, yeah. Despite the setbacks, in other areas, things are going to plan. Now they can begin mounting the engines, one of the most impressive and expensive single parts of the whole aircraft. Together, four of these giant Rolls-Royce Trent 900s cost nearly 36 million pounds. That's the same as four tons of solid gold, a quarter of the cost of the finished plane. Flight testing began back in May 2004, when the new engine was bolted onto an Airbus A340, a much smaller airliner. It dwarfs the other engines. Weighing over six tons, the Trent 900 can produce up to 35 tons of thrust at full power, burning a gallon of fuel every four seconds. These early tests proved the engine at altitude, but there's a much, much tougher test to come. Here in Hucknall, Nottinghamshire, another test engine will soon be a smoking ruin deliberately destroyed as part of a dramatic and crucial safety test. Every few years, a fan blade will fail in a jet engine somewhere in the world. A rare but violent event that must not put lives in danger. At the root of the colored blade is an explosive charge. With the engine at full power, it will be detonated, releasing the blade with astonishing force. Whatever happens, the blade must not be allowed to burst out of the engine, where, in real life, it could do serious damage to the rest of the aircraft. In a room 200 yards away, watching via a video link, are 25 key personnel, each hoping the test goes as planned. In the split second the blade is released, the engine must successfully contain an enormous amount of energy. This is a very, this is a very violent um, test. This thing is spinning around. It's at full power, so you've got uh, the forces on on the blade uh, are quite quite significant. It's like having a, a locomotive uh, hanging on on that on that blade. So you're obviously having to contain the energy of, of that system. So there's a lot of energy involved in the design and containment of the, of the blade. I mean, the whole you know the whole engine will get a huge big shape. 